welcome to another edition of Vantage Point. Today we'll be talking about elections 2020 and in studio I have with me Dr. Chedi Joey Jagan Jr. Right, right. How are you sir? Thanks I'm for coming right. on our show. I'm okay. So today Dr. Uh, Jagan will be telling us about his political life and his support for the APNU AFC coalition. Sir, uh, you're the son of two past presidents, uh, Dr. Chedi Jagan and Janet Jagan. Mm -hmm. And throughout the history of the People's Progressive Party, for which your father would have co-founded, you would have been uh, critical of that party and also very supportive of that party. As we approach elections, what is your honest assessment of the, uh, of the PPP uh, back then under the leadership of your parents and now under this current leadership? And the leadership, I'm speaking about the leadership of the PPP. Well, you know, I uh, lived through the period when my father ran Guyana and when he didn't. And uh, I grew up in his household, so I knew my father well. And my father was a great father, I could tell anybody though. You know, he never had any money to give me because he always used to give my mother any money he made as a dentist. And when he was a politician, my father never committed any acts of corruption or nepotism. If I went to my father and asked him for something to do with politics, you know, like a house or a duty free car or whatever. I would have never done it because I would have figured that he would have looked at me with, you know, disdain and shock that I would come and ask him something like that. That's the kind of man he was. So my father was not corrupt. And even though he was a Marxist, I want people to understand this clearly, he was a Marxist Leninist. He also had a tradition of Gandhiism in him. He grew up with that. He couldn't shed that. So he had that spirit of Gandhiism, and Gandhi, some of his most famous words uh, was that the truth is God and God is the truth. And my father tried to live that life, talking the truth and running his party with a certain amount of populism within the party. People were popular. Uh, the leaders like Ralph Ram Grant's father, Boise Ram Koran. We had people. Uh, so, fast forward to now, and that party is now in the control of Mr. Jagdeo and his cohorts, the people around him. Uh, and, you know, when my father left government in 1964, I was living with him in Red House. I was 14, 15. In 1964, he was 46 years old. He'd been running Guyana for 11 years straight, basically. And he had no home to go to. He didn't own a house or a piece of land anywhere. And here we have people who went on the mansions and swimming pools. My father lived the kind of life. He was a different kind of leader. He was more like the Mahatma. So, and by the way, it isn't incidental that Martin Luther King that great American leader was a follower of, of, of the Mahatma. He went to India to do a pilgrimage to the Mahatma in his dining room at home with his family. There was only one picture in his dining room, and that was Mahatma. So Mahatma has a lot of relevance to today's politics, but we, can get, 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 we could get into yeah. it another time. Things like self-reliance, which my godfather and my father preach. Self-reliance. We need to get to that stage. So. Here we have a difference, a different party, a party that lost Moses Nagamutu, Kamraj, Ralph Ram Koran, myself, and uh, they try to blame, saying that we left because we couldn't attain. Lead. Well, in my case, it's irrelevant because I stayed in the People's Progressive Party for eight months. All the rest of them sort of years, donkeys years. I stayed eight months and resigned. So. That, I'm not applicable, but what I'm saying, they drove these leaders out. Moses Nagamut has been prime minister for the last four years, one and five. And to me, Mr. Grange made an excellent choice because Mr. Moses 
is more of a politician, a man who feels the people than say a Sam Hines or a Phillips. They don't understand the politics of what happened. Moses has been in the trenches for years. And so has Kemraj. So the party there now has changed. The, the, the humility my father preached, the way he lived his life, no tolerance of any kind of corruption, or even worse, even if you claim you are not corrupt, there's a perception in the population that you were corrupt. That's just as important. So, Do you think the um, supporters on the ground are um, taking stock of the situation, uh, the change in policies or the change in focus, as you would have alluded to? Uh, well, you know, sometimes the problem we have is that the ground people on the ground, the regular people, get carried away with emotion. They look at things in a lot of people with a racial bent in it. I'll give you an example. Then. If I said at the meeting a letter, if Mr. Granger was an Indian and they only had Indians living in Guyana, nobody else, just Indians, everybody's Indian, and Mr. Granger was an Indian, Mr. Granger don't even have to campaign. He could just stay in his home, he won the next election. You understand? Yeah. But because Mr. Granger is an Afro Guyanese, some people get carried away by emotion, and then people, politicians, feed that emotion. And it happens on both sides. This is, you know, this, everybody's guilty of this. But we need to correct it. And I feel Mr. Granger's policies are correcting it while they stay for. I'll give you another example how they have changed the PPP. My father believed, I could prove it to anybody, in coalition governance that we must share the power and work together. He believed in that. They don't believe in that. They want one power rule. We don't want no one party rule. So people might say, for example, well, Mr. Granger aligned with the WP, they don't have no support. I don't buy none of that. The WP have been wrong a long time. And they know people. Even if and circumstances influence a vote. The WP is now a part of the government. They got doc, Dr. Clive Thomas. He's an old warrior. He get old, but he's an old warrior. And he got a reputation. So they got people going to follow him. Uh, Minister Keith Scott. Okay, they say they criticize. But Minister Keith Scott knows a lot of people. He's an old warrior too. He's been around a long time. Fighting in the trenches. So, on, on, on top of the WBA comes the tradition of Walter Rodney, who was a great guy in his patriot, right? So, we have people in there, Mr. Sharm, who always stood up for the poor people in this country. So, you understand? Yeah. So, when they dismiss these people, they, they're, they, they, they're living in a dream world. So, just to end by that prop thing yeah. we're talking about, they, the PPP of today, is not the PP of Chetty Jagan. I don't care what anybody says. They could argue with me and I'm a traitor. I see people writing in the Facebook how I'm a there, so I should be ashamed. My father, mother, what they did, and I'm a traitor and all that. But I don't, I don't care. The point is that I support Mr. Granger because I see the changes that happened there and they weren't for the better. They weren't. In 2011, though, you would have supported uh, mm -hmm. the PPP. You would have endorsed that party. And yeah. then in 2015, we saw you you came out in support of the coalition. Right. Um, what caused you to support um, the PPP uh, back then and what resulted in that major shift uh, in 20, 2015? I yeah. know you spoke about corrupt yeah, behavior yeah, yeah, yeah. and so forth, but what hit home after the 2011 that, that, You know, I've been interviewed a lot of times, and that's a very good question. And I'm glad you brought it up. Okay. Because to explain briefly, let me explain briefly. In 2011, I am a believer, like my father was, in coalition politics. In 2011, APNU and the AFC ran separate. And I was against that. Because you go check the record. I always called for that unity. Even when way back in the, in the uh, or when I first came, we had talks with the third force. Yeah. The WP was in it, uh, AFC, you know, and other people. So anyway, I didn't see it happening. And I, Donald Ramatar talked to me and he promised, because I told him certain things I looking for, for the people, not for me, to happen for the people. He told me, 
after the election, I support them. And, and guess what? You know, politics is politics. When you're in the battle, you're in the battle. You understand? You, you're not about taking no prisoners. You're just about winning. And that's what it's about in the bottom line. So, and I'm looking to win for me. You can't have nothing to get. You understand? I'm looking for nothing for me. I'm looking for the benefit of the poor people in this country. I told some politician I met, if you claim to be a politician and you can do things to help the poorer classes in this country, you're no politician, you're a charlatan. That's who you are. Because the bottom line is helping the poor people in this country and uplifting them. And when you uplift them, you can uplift everybody. So, after the election in 2011, when we won, when the PEP won it, but really lost it, yeah, because right. they had a minority government. Right. Within two months, you go and check the record, I was attacking the PP. Within two months. It didn't like two years. It was two months I was attacking them because I realized they're full of nonsense. They mean nothing they told me that they can do. So then I saw the coalition effect coming, and that's how I ended up supporting Mr. Granger. I support Mr. Granger, number one, because of his efforts at coalition governance. I support it because guess what? Mr. Granger and his party was directly opposite to Moses and his party. You understand? In terms of everything almost. And now they're working together. And Camraj the same thing. Camraj is a very good leader and he'll prove out to be that. Mm -hmm. He'll make an excellent prime minister. So what I'm saying is I am here to support, I am working to support Mr. Granger. That's about it. Okay. But you said that the two months after the 2011 mm -hmm. elections, you came out and you rejected the PPP. Right. What are some of the uh, maybe promises or uh, pledges or policy decisions they had uh, pledged to make, but they didn't, uh, that resulted in a major shift? Right. Well, to be honest with you, I, you know, it was such a bad period for me in terms of, because I took a big risk by doing it with my political background, yeah. where I stood all the time. And... Uh, I regretted doing it, right? Because they weren't. Ta I, I'm talking with things like, okay, I'll tell you one I remember. Please fix all the playgrounds for the kids all over this country in their little towns or wherever they are. Fix the playgrounds. Put in a shed, and you put you hire a man to oversee it. Yeah. And you put a shed with some cricket bats, balls, and get the, at least get the kids something to enjoy themselves in the afternoon. They need that, right? They want to listen. Go and check now. In 2015, by the time they were running again from 2011, they built one proper. Even they didn't even have the respect for Chaddy Jagan by fixing the playground at Port Morant. And I hope the McGregor administration fixes where Can I and Butcher used to play right there by Port Morant. If they could fix that field, they didn't even do that. You understand? So yeah. these are little things. See, I always used to tell my father and I tell the public, the little things are the most important things. Not the big, those are important, but the little things to the people is always important, right? In Latem, uh, during the rally, mm -hmm. the APNU rally, you spoke about the leadership of uh, the PPP at this stage. And so the, uh, the PPP would have put forward uh, Mr. Irfan Ali, as the presidential candidate, right. uh, but you talk about um, Mr. Jaglio being the one who would actually lead should the PPP win the elections. Uh, ex, could you expand on that? Well, I call Mr. Ali the front man, mm -hmm. and Mr. Jaglio the back man, and then they got other people around with different names. I, bang, you know, I, 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 I that's my position. He's the front man, he's the back man. So what you're doing is electing two people for president. It's not one, it's two. We don't need two people for president. What stupidness is that? We don't have a dual uh, country here with a border in between. So we need one president, not two. So it's obvious that front man got to listen to everything back man tell you to do. Mm -hmm. So it don't matter if he's the pre president, prime minister, or whatever, he called in the shots. So, we don't want that because we lived under him calling the shots so many years. He had every opportunity, every opportunity to lead this country into a bright future. He was young. He could involve entrepreneurship in this country. So we need, you know that. 
We need young people to get loans so they can build their businesses and then create jobs and wealth in this country along with the money they're coming in. So, Mr. Jack, they have every opportunity to do that. What did he do? He squandered it. He didn't do nothing for us. He brought a 16% consumption tax. He lost money here, there, and everywhere. There was no they criticized him, Mr. Granger, and the Exxon deal. Well, we can, maybe we could talk about that a little yeah. bit, the Exxon deal. They're criticizing and cussing out the Exxon deal. But the Exxon deal is going to be delivering money by the end of March here to us. Show me one deal that Mr. Jack they was signed to deliver any money to us. Show me one. There's none. We lost money. Guy Suko, Skeldon. Hey, I could carry you through the list, but it isn't necessary. Other people are doing that. So that is where I stand, you know, in terms of what is going on. Mr. Jack they wants to get back in the government. And we ain't gonna allow it, it ain't gonna happen. Right? When you look at, and you would have endorsed the, like I said, you would have endorsed the uh, AP and UALC coalition in 2015, and mm. now again in 2020, you're endorsing that coalition again. What are some of the major, besides them coming together uh, for uh, the development of uh, the country, what are some of the major policies, uh, programs, and projects that you were pleased with? on the uh, this current administration that would con concretize your support for them yeah well I, you know i didn't just endorse them i willing to go there and campaign for them right yeah uh, and that's more than just endorsing i was willing to go anywhere and campaign for them because i to start with thank god for bringing exxon mobil it's a lifesaver for us it breeds a breath of fresh air in our economy. It can make us boom. Other things gonna follow. Tourism. We get an asphalt plant. We get in cold storage. We get in two new hotels. All on the Mr. Granger open up the country. So that is one thing. Then the other thing at the local level, roads being I just came back from Rubenuni. They're doing excellent work there, helping the people. And we need to, I just, you remember I said it, we need to help the people of this country to uplift themselves. When they uplift themselves, everybody will be uplifted. Read the Bible. Is that right in the Bible? The oldest book in history. Just read it. So, what I'm saying is that a lot of things have pleased me. There's some things that I don't want to get into that. I didn't live up to expectation, but you know, what well, I'm happy do? for you to talk about some of the things you would have observed that maybe the coalition could have worked on crime. Mm -hmm. I t but I understand the problems, you know. I, I, my mother was once the home affairs minister, I used to hear her talking with the police force. So, okay, a lot of those things still here, and those in the 60s, you understand? So, I understand the problems because you gotta remember now when my father came back to power in 1992. By 93, I was living at him in State House, me and my family. And he asked us to live there. We were building a house. And I saw the problems he was having. And he had experience in governance before. Mr. Granger didn't have that. So certain things like crime, like, for example, I think that uh, we could have, and I see Mr. Granger's addressing the problem, we could have dealt with the sugar workers who were dismissed a little better, in my opinion. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, the little problems that arose between the two parties in the coalition. Remember when they between had this, the revising yeah, yeah, of the Yeah, and they were deciding, yeah. yeah. I, I kind of wasn't too happy with her. I don't think those things should be made public at all. You should you got to settle those things behind doors, in my opinion, with all goodwill to each other. You know, because it's a matter of making sure that you win. Yeah. We have to win this election. It's very, very crucial to win this election. Right, and I'm fully on board, and anything I could do to help. So, th those are the things. I mean, just Exxon Mobil, thank God, thank you, God. Just Exxon Mobil coming here is enough. You need me to talk about anything else. The power of that company mm -hmm. and the influence it can bring here. Them white people all over the world looking again, you know. They weren't looking again before. Who bring them? Mr. Granger. Thank you very much. But you, um, 
you praise uh, Exxon Mobil for coming. Yes. But there are some who would have criticized government over the 2% royalty and the contract, the 50% uh, profit. They're yeah. saying that the 2% royalty, we could have probably gotten a bit more. What's your uh, assessment? And in fact, some persons are even calling for a renegotiation of that contract with Exxon and uh, the government. Do you think of Guyana got a fair deal? Uh, Ma'am, I'll tell you the truth, you know, as God above, we got a fantastic deal. I don't care what anybody says. They could say all they want. And let me run, you see people understand history of things. When Aramco invested in Saudi Arabia and Iran after World War II, this is a long time ago, they got raw deals. You think they got any good deals? But, look, today, Saudi Arabia owns Aramco. It worth four trillion dollars, US dollars. They own it. So it took time. I don't know what these people are up to. They talk like if it's magic. It's a huge investment. It's a massive investment that ExxonMobil made in our country. And ExxonMobil, like all the Zodi white boys are, they want back their money. And we're going to be able to negotiate as time moves, but we got to educate our people. This is why Ms. Granger talked, but I hope it's going to extend to the fact that we should be plucking people out who finish in high school with top. Like I saw a guy there, he won, he had 15 distinctions out of 20 CI. I'm plucking him now, send to Harvard and Oxford and Cambridge and them places, I'm bringing them back. And them is the men who going to negotiate deals to, make, to give us a lot more. Saudi Arabia and Iran, with their deals now, within a couple of years, 20 years, I think, they were getting 60% and up and things like that. So there's always a way to go, but you need smart people who know what they're doing. These, these dunces on the other side, that's why I call them dunces. Starting with, what's his name again? I forget his name. The one with the long hair, he just grew this, Christopher Ram. He's a dunce, a total dunce as far as I'm concerned. Why are you criticizing and want to change and then the PP want to change your contract too? That's what they're talking about. We got oil in the high seas right now. We can get money soon. What are you talking about? Well, let's start. Yeah. Let's focus on how um, Guyanese could benefit with the current contract in place, with us, uh, the revenue soon to uh, mm -hmm. flow in. What are some of the critical areas you see uh, there's need for investment? You spoke a bit about education just now, investing yeah. in education. Uh, how could Guyanese across the country, on the ground, benefit from such uh, resources? Because they could benefit directly. That's for the government to look at yeah. the money coming in. And Mr. Clive Thomas talked about relieving people. Yeah. I mean, Dr. Clive Thomas. Uh, I don't know if it's viable. I'm kind of mm, in the middle of it. But I don't have a problem with it, right? Because people need relief now. Yeah. So... The second thing, how they're going to benefit, is that you got to remember, it ain't just the oil. It's what's going to follow. Things going to follow. The dominant the effect. Yes. It can follow. Tourism already kicking in. We, we redeemed among the top countries to visit now. Look, I went to Rupununi. I was just sitting along there watching the mountains. It's so beautiful. You understand? We, our country is beautiful. So we need to develop that in its jobs, training. We got all kind of, of resources here to export water, all kind of stuff. So so the country can benefit, but it ain't gonna happen overnight. People who think it can happen overnight, they're making a big mistake. It can't happen overnight. It took us 50 years to get where we are today, which is downward. We went downward for 50 years, basically, right? So we want to pull ourselves back upward to, as Mr. Gray just said, the good life, right? And that could happen within the next, you know, 10 years, but we have to be patient and be resourceful and invest our money in other things like agriculture. We could make a lot of money in agriculture, plenty. We could, uh, you know, when people don't even understand, like if you look at our flora and fauna, you know how many zoos and botanical gardens all over the world would be glad to buy from us? You know, we could breed these animals, have trained young people to do that. So there's just an area. You know, so I'll give you another example that people might even think, they might laugh. 
aquarium fish. If you buy aquarium fish in Ghana now, it's coming from Thailand. We could break into that market. We could breed aquarium fish here and export it all over the world. So go, go and check, Google it. It's a big industry. We got the water, we got the people who could do it. So there's a lot of potential in this country that people didn't even start to scratch at. Right? And, and we got to, and those are the benefits that can come our way. Once the white boys abroad start to focus in, they got the money. They got the money. Who gonna take it out the ground? Look, we brought Roussel, a waste of time failure. We need to bring the Canadians or the Americans in to deal, deal with our box, right? And other minerals we have, right? They're the best people to deal with. The forest, when they chop down a tree, they, they replant. That's what we need, people like them. You spoke about the country, and this is a fact, us being uh, racial, racially divided. Uh, going into the elections, elections being just days away, and that we'll go to the polls on March 2, what would you say to the people what are some of the key things they should look at if they're still indecisive at this point as to who they should vote for? What are some of the things you would ask, especially if you could talk, and you spoke about investing in young people, what young people should consider as they prepare to go to the votes and shift away from this old yeah. um, racial Right. Well, I want to tell the young people and people in general that now where we stand, you can't afford to think black or in or brown. You got to think green. Green is the color of the Yankee Dalo. When I was growing up, they had a song that was very popular by the Merry Men called Walking for the Yankee Dollar, the Big Bamboo. And that's what we're looking for. So when you're looking at this election coming here, you know, I'm urging young people of all races to forget about race. Race can't get us nowhere. It never did, and it never will. Black Guyanese got more in common with Indian Guyanese than with Africans. Indian Guyanese got more in common with black Guyanese than with Indians from India. That's a fact. If a Guyanese team was to get in the World Cup and reach the final now, and they're playing for the final against some team, Germany or some way, Every single Guyanese, Indian or black, even though the team might be totally black or 90% black, would support that team. We have a sense of being Guyanese. So we got to look at this election and forget about race and look at what is at stake. And what is at stake is looking at the contenders you have and evaluating them to their integrity, honesty, commitment, the record, and what, what they're talking about, the future. Because the future is the most important thing. Right? And young people got to take over this country. And you got to look at, uh, not all young people. I mean, when Barry Jagde was young, he was the president. He was young. And what did he do? He did brought us the same old time religion politics we always had. He bring nothing new. He used the same old standard solutions in the past, and it got him nowhere. And this is why we are where we are today, Mr. Green, just trying to fix it. And it ain't easy, especially when you had to deal with cancer. And then when you had to deal with the Judas Charandas. He's the worst Judas. He worse than Judas himself. Because at least Judas had a clear conscience to go and least commit suicide and done it himself. This guy here, he's still talking stupidness all over the place. And should the coalition um, be re-elected uh, come March 2, what would be, I know that you would have offered your assessment, but what would be your expectations from them as somebody who would not have only endorsed but rallied behind them going forward? Because people often say, you know, power, you know, sometimes people get consumed mm -hmm. by that. By power, yeah. What would you advise the coalition, given that you would have um, endorsed them and rallied behind them, well, you know, first of all, I don't, I've, for months now, I've looked at it as not of if we win, Mr. Granger win. I knew Mr. Granger going to this election a long time ago. And there ain't nothing that could convince me otherwise. So we are already, as far as I'm concerned, elections two weeks ago, Mr. Granger going to win this election and win it handily. But to talk about what I expect, you know, 
The only thing I expect out of Mr. Granger is to help the poor people of this country because I'm not poor, but I feel for them people and their our fellow Guyanese and they don't deserve it. They believe in God just like us. So we need to help them. Charity in the answer. They need programs to uplift themselves. They need good jobs. They need good training. They need, and crime will fit, will, once you offer alternatives, and you bring in stringent anti-criminal policing, you'll get a lot of results. Okay. You know, and, and that's what we need to do. The extra money coming in, we got to get all people to work. Have you taken a look at their manifesto? I know one of the talk about uh, for the tax reform, uh, friendly tax business and uh, business friendly taxes, they say um, offering grants to persons who send their children to school, uh, and they spoke about constitutional reform. Have you taken a look at that document as to what they're really offering the Guyanese people? Well, you know, I uh, I grew up in this stuff, and you know, manifestos. I don't, I, you know, I, I understand why they need to be done, and I understand yeah. the programs they have, and there are on both sides. A lot of them have good programs for the people, mm -hmm. but is instituting in putting those programs in the place, them. implement. So I hope. And pray that they implement the same programs they got in the manifesto, mm -hmm. uh, because you know we we lived through many years where people didn't, you know, and those are the problems we got. So I feel that once Mr. Granger wins this election, and he can be able to settle in, relax a little bit more, he been under a lot of pressure, and get the country run in the right direction and I think he's on the road to that, bringing in more young people, talented young people, whether they're abroad or here, it don't matter. Guyanese are Guyanese and they got a lot of smart people abroad too. So we need to cash in on that. You know, oil in the oil is our natural resource, gold, diamonds, but we got another resource which is our brains, yeah. our people. We need to develop them. You know, quick I'll give you an example then. Right now, cricket is a big sport worldwide. People making money. When they make all this money, they got to pay taxes to the country they come from. You know how many cricketers we could produce here? We had Basil Butcher, Rowan Kanai, two of the classics. We had Joe Salmon, Landscapes, one of the greatest bowlers of all time. And we got them here. We need a cricket academy. So I hope that things like that, Mr. Granger, will institute. We need county cricket going again hard so we could produce stars we want stars we had stars we always did you know so i just using cricket as an example yeah, an boxing example. is another thing we need to promote that and invest money in that so all young boxers instead of going to crime they could go abroad and make millions and guess what we get in taxes you gotta pay some taxes here so all these things are a part of what we could be doing with the human potential we got here. We need to utilize it. And I have a feeling, and that's why I support Mr. Granger. I don't know for sure, who knows what the future holds. But I feel that as a person who's been around this stuff for a long time, that he will invest in things like that and uplift the guy. Dr. Jagan, as we wrap up today's program, any closing remarks, uh, would it be to you again, um, alluding, and you spoke about um, making that decision come March uh, 2, but there's some young people who say, oh, I don't need to vote because, you know, that's politics. I still got to mm. go to my 9 to 5 job. Uh, words yeah. of encouragement and just a wrap up of your position as uh, the country heads into this very significant, they say the mother of all elections, uh, come March 2. Closing yeah. words. Well, I would just like to thank you for having me on your show. And you're very uh, smart. I like that. And uh, as you know, we talked about it before. I said I don't want no questions before. That's, that's, you know, so thanks for that. So I just want to say to the guy and his people, especially the young people, that this election is a crucial election. I don't know if it's the mother of all elections, because in my opinion, the mother of all elections was 1953, when we won the biggest victory against the colonial powers that were here. But this is maybe the mother's son of all elections, you know. But, uh, you know, all I have to say to you is that you need to think and use your conscience. And remember what Gandhi said, 
truth is God and God is the truth. If you don't believe in God, then that doesn't apply to you. But if you have a belief in a religion and an almighty, then examine your conscience. Look at what you have in front of you. Don't worry at all. The talk and talk come from every side. The talk and talk and talk. Look at that person. Look in the face. Look in the picture of them. You might not see them in port. Look at the picture of their eyes. And you make up your own mind. Don't get carried away by religion or race or anything else. Just think you're a Guyanese and we can get real, real rich. That is what we're going for. We want to get rich. We've been poor too long, this nation. We want to be a nation that people can respect. When they come to Guyana, they can see the Twin Towers. Well, that's one of my dreams. To put up a copy of the Twin Towers that was there when it got knocked down yeah. by them no goods. Right? So, what I'm saying is, and secondly, what is important that I've always talked about is we must have bonds with America that are like that. And Mr. Grange has proven to lead us in that direction. We must have bonds with the United States. We got a lot of old people who are, there, are there. And guess what? People like the cost of the United States, but they took our people in and all of them doing well. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a Guyanese American, and I'm proud of that. And America is still the greatest place in the world to live. I don't care anybody says, besides Guyana. So, all I'm saying is examine your conscience, look carefully. Don't forget about the words for a minute and the promises and all that. Just look at each person, look at the family life, look at the travails they went through, look at their experience, and make up your own mind and go out there and vote. I'll give you an example then quickly. Schumann. Schumann is running for president. He leaves Canada and comes on here and suddenly he won't be president. What does Schumann take us for? He got no respect for the guy and he's voter, so don't vote for him. So think carefully about what you're looking at. Remember, Mr. Granger got a big team and he expanded it and he can youth, bring more youth in. I'm convinced of that. So please, get up early, smile in your face and go out and vote for Mr. Granger and bring keep this government in place so we could enjoy the fruits of what God gave us. Please remember that. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jagan, for right. sharing. Thanks. And with that, we have come to the end of this edition of Vantage Point. Do join us tomorrow for another edition. I've been your host, Watlana Marshall. Goodbye for now. Are you planning a trip for business or leisure and looking for the most direct and economic offers? But you confused? And instead of heading to the internet and searching websites for best deals, you simply need to contact the travel professionals at Munich War Travel Service. 45 Water Street, Churchtown. Their well-trained travel advisors with years of experience will assist you in booking your flights, accessing all airlines, hotels, car rentals at the most competitive prices to match your budget. Their customer service is second to none. Their qualified travel consultants will make you dream of seeing the world and ensuring your trip be the perfect one a travel experience beyond your expectations they'll give you the best value to save time and money provide 24-hour service to fix problems if things go wrong during your trip giving you options you haven't considered if you haven't decided where you want to go arrange group travel accepting all major credit cards both local and overseas daily deals available which are also available online so call visit or email them to have the experience of their immaculate service munich war travel service 45 water street georgetown 5 and two 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 seven six nine nine two or two two five two nine four seven or drop us an email what is your travel at yahoo dot Guyol Super 95 Gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide.
For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guile's Super 95 Gasoline. Fuel it up and drive!